everybody. Welcome to Bitch Sesh. It's Danielle Schneider. Now, look, I do have some bad news. Casey Wilson is not here today. R.I.P. Casey. Um, she is shooting a show. But what I have for you, what I have for you, you're not even going to miss her today because I have a show to end shows. First of all, our guest host is just everybody's favorite. And our guest is someone we've been dying to get on. He's a... Uh, a, a, a king among kings, a man among men. He's friends with Lisa fucking Rinna. Like, we have a show for you today. So let me first bring out my guest co-host, who hasn't been on the show. Bring out. She's here. She's sitting right here <laughs> laughing. I'm going to bring her out of the closet that I have her kept in. Mm -hmm. uh, Leslie Grossman. Hi, Danielle. No, everybody loves you. Last time you were on the podcast, you literally called up Vicky Gumbelson and she offered to I do can't your insurance. I she answered. <laughs> Wasn't that the so craziest it thing was ever? like the most fortuitous, amazing thing, but you know, she did not pursue uh, a relationship as my accountant. And I really thought that no, was- No, you mean oh, no, my, my, I'm sorry, not my Please, no, my get insurer, it right. My insurer. <laughs> but I just, she answered on the first ring. Do you remember that? It was like we had it planned it. It was crazy. And Thank then God. she was just like, hi. And then immediately went into her sales pitch It was you. great. It was great. It was I'm, impressive. Look, I love being on Bitch Sesh. We love having um, you. I understand that Casey is working. I couldn't be more thrilled that I get to pinch hit for her. This yeah. is a show. This is a show. Today is a show. This is a show for the ages. Yes, and I'm very excited. And I don't feel like we're talking it up too much. No, this is... you can't possibly talk it up too no. much. There's and, not enough talking And you up. are on uh, American Horror Story again. You I are am. shooting this amazing show. You're in these crazy 80s outfits. Yes. Which you look amazing in. P.S. They're all, it's really a lot. I mean, that, that time was not, there's, the, I spent the first bunch of episodes and like a lady short with I a deep pleat. you looked great. You know, you're saying that because you're my friend and no. you're lovely. I know what it looks like. No, I, I know. I honestly, I think that <laughs> that era, like you would have fit in beautifully. I you have the hair for that I era? don't disagree. I don't disagree. It's been a lot. I'm covered in like bug bites and mosquitoes because we've been shooting on location. Are you at, at like camp. Disney Ranch? They are actually, I, I, well, I don't want to say where we're filming because okay. we're still filming. Okay. And we've taken over a local area where they built an actual camp and it is open to the public <laughs> and people come. walk by when we're in the middle of shoot i'm like what is happening like it's really crazy that's amazing but it, yeah we're really at a camp so it's it's been a lot but anyway okay this was my one day off and i feel and I like the universe took care of me and said i'm we're gonna give you this treat because it's gonna get real good i'm so excited so I'm thank you for having me oh are you kidding me we feel blessed blessed <laughs> to have you. Wonderful. We feel very lucky. Let me just make a few announcements real quick and then we're going to Go. bring out our guest. Guys, we have a few more tickets left for our Halloween show where we ha do our Andy Cohen cosplay, as I call it, <laughs> which we all dress up as housewives. There will be a costume competition. It's going to be amazing. And our special guest, we have Jessica St. Clair. Sadly, Jerry O'Connell had to bail out on it Jerry. because he is shooting, but we have Lauren Lapkus coming in and she is amazing. Do you have your outfit ready? Oh, yeah. Are you allowed to say or is it a surprise? No, I'm in a surprise. Got everybody. it. Okay. But it's a doozy. I can't Casey even has really. Oh, and what Lauren <laughs> Lapkus told me, I, guys, we have costumes for the ages, so I'm very excited. And then, guys, we're going back to New York City. Oh my God. This is really fun. Oh I mean, God. this is fun. Yeah, it is. Our live shows, we really, we do them up. And this year, yeah. we're going to have some special <gasps> guests in New York City. So we're coming to New York um, on February 1st at 8 p.m. at Town Hall. We changed venues. We're moving on up in the world. So Town Hall, don't miss it. Tickets will be on sale Friday, today, when this is coming out. So guys, don't miss it. New York City, we're coming at you. And we're very excited. We have a big, big show planned for big New York. sesh on the and road. for Halloween. But... Now I would like to introduce our guest. Okay, you guys are going to really be happy. I love this man. Okay, first of all, I've been a fan of his. I discovered him on the interwebs um, because he had done this whole, he and his husband had now done this thing where they reenacted the scene from Les Mis. Mm. And I lost my mind when that was there. <laughs> and then he has a Instagram account. He's a writer. He has written and produced some of your favorite shows, Will and Grace, naming one of them, Family Guy, Vicious. Mm, the best. And he has an Instagram account where he basically just poses as King, as Prince George, soon to be our one king. One day, hopefully. King and it is the funniest fucking thing. 
please welcome to the podcast, Gary Janetti. Yay! Hi, guys. This Thanks, is Danielle. A Hi, Leslie. What were you mouthing when she was talking about Les Mis? Yeah. Oh, she was something. like, you and Brad. Brad, yeah. Brad and I did it together. I was like, he wasn't, I did it. You did it. Sorry. Sorry. He walked, <laughs> Brad watched it. I did it. That was, I mean, it was, you but were I, speaking to me th- <laughs> when you guys did that. I was like, who is this person that I need to be friends with oh, and that's have so nice. It was on me. Brad's Bravo reality show. Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, it's Brad Brad World. Where yes. If any of you remember. Oh, yeah, I, remember. Well, I, I didn't where watch I appeared, every episode. Where, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Where I, where I appeared. And uh, yeah, so that we did that for our, that, I did that as a surprise for our 10th that anniversary. Was, but that's so nice of you to say, Dad. Are you kidding me? I was like, I was in tears and I was like, <laughs> this is real love. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone, if my husband would do this for me, like, oh, oh I wouldn't need effort. anything else. And I had never sung in my life before <sighs> public. Amazing. Publicly, and then we were like being filmed on the show, and then we were doing a live performance on top of that. So it was very like, you know, a show within a show within a show kind of. Thing. Uh, it was really, as, as it was so stressful. It I've was, never done any. I was like, if I could do this and not, you know, like I can do anything. So I still use that whenever I'm doing something that's about to be like extraordinarily stressful or I'm anxious. I'm like, it's still not as bad as that. Night. <laughs> so, you're well, it's fine. delivered in dividends because that I still think on that when I'm like ever like, I, and I'll watch it. Like it was. <laughs> <laughs> Truly beautiful. I'm such a Les Mis fan, such a musical theater I fan. I saw people talking about it. I remember it being a thing. Like, did you see? And <laughs> yes. it was like, oh, oh, yes, I did. <laughs> of course. Of course. You really set a standard when you did that. True. Yes. At everybody else's birthdays, uh, 10 anniversaries, <laughs> and such. You also have a new book that I read, and it is the funniest fucking book. Guys, it's called Do You Mind If I Cancel? Things That Still Annoy Me by Gary Janetti. It is so fantastic. And Gary, I don't want to make you uncomfortable by complimenting you to your face. You won't. Okay, great. Um, is <laughs> that Because I found out my love language is compliments. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I'm is fine. mine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that I don't care about all the sense. I don't even care about gifts. No, I don't yeah, give yeah. No, I can that. take compliments. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Oh. That's not one of my so things. It's, supposed to be, it's really called like words of love. Or well, words yeah, of- but it's just compliments. <laughs> so what I was thinking when I read this book, which by the way, imagine like your smartest, funniest friend oh my God. talking to you. And just your way with words and the way that you explain things is truly so like, funny. it's so goddamn funny. I can't even explain, but it's also got a ton of heart. Oh my God. Um, yes. And we also learned so much about you. Like I loved hearing all about your childhood and I love that you really embrace and own exactly where you come from and who you are. Um, but well, I was thinking this is the perfect book to have over the holidays when you're with your family yes. to hide. Like, yeah. go hide and <laughs> oh, read this nice. book. Because it'll be like you're with your favorite friend, even when you're being tortured and by your family. At your family. Thanks, yes, guys. exactly. So- and just hearing you talk about your family, like, I think it's the perfect, ho- like, over the holidays book. That's oh, nice. Well, and there's a quote on the back from huge people, people like, um, <clears throat> Armistad, and I'm so bad at pronouncing Armistad his name. Armistead Maupin. Yes, mm-hmm. he wrote Tales in the City, guys. I know he is. I'm a, big deal. A, a big deal. A big deal. And also Lisa Rinna, who just says oh. in her quote, Gary. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. She always does on your Instagram, yeah, too, which left makes me Instagram laugh. Yeah, Instagram, and she's gone into the, into the world. I love it. In, in book form. I love that she's like, like, it's almost like you've gone too far, Gary. That's what she's... When the book was coming out, I called Lisa. I was like, can I, I want your quote to be Gary. She was like, she's like I love, love it. Yeah. Love. We were like, too I, funny. And you could even read the intention behind just Gary. Like, she's like, Gary. Like, and sometimes, you know, you're. she's just like, Gary. You're like, you can always feel where her Gary lies, even even though it's just the word Gary, which I I love Lisa Rinna. She is the housewife with the biggest sense of herself. But let me go Absolutely. back to your book real quick. First of all, there's just I knew I knew I loved you way back. But then when you just simply titled a chapter, Patty Lupone. <laughs> <laughs> like, I end that story. Oh, which story. I don't even want to give away too no. much Uh-oh. because it's so oh, wonderful what happens with Patty Lupone. It is incredible. And also Thanks. the fact that you're like, we're still not okay. <laughs> Good. It's so, but like, just literally when I saw, I think it's like the second chapter, and it just says Patty LuPone. I just went yeah. ah, <laughs> like that. It's so it, good. She's yeah. That's She's so nice. But I really appreciate that. Not that many people, you know, have read it actually at this point. It comes out on Tuesday. I know. Uh, but... And I'm um, actually after this, I leave for a book tour. Kind of, <sighs> I'll be. In conversation on. with people? Not in con- I'm reading, I'm going to read an essay and then I'll meet, you know, whoever shows up. So I don't know. I think a like, lot of people are going to show you, up, I'll, Gary. All right, I'll totally I check guess. you. Please. I'll be like, you were wrong, Leslie. <laughs> no. This is a picture of the bookstore I'm at in Portland <laughs> right now. A lot no. of people are, Do you know which essay you're going to read? No, I'm going to kind of wing it. I'm going to eyeball the crowd yes. and see what, what it seems like. The first one I know, I'm actually going to read Patty Lapone. <gasps> 
in New York. I mean, at, at can the you, first can one you in, die in, on Tuesday? Can um, you die? So I'm going to read that one. But it's so nice to hear. I'm so glad that you're responding, you know, because uh, having written for characters and shows, you know, Will and Grace and Family Guy, you know, and all that stuff. And even, you know, through Prince George on Instagram, mm -hmm. I'm somewhat distanced, you know, from what I'm writing, yes. you know, there's some, but there's a bit of protection and I'm a person who's a very um, private person. Usually, you know, it's like yes. I'm, I'm, I'm home yes. most of the time when I don't have to be <laughs> um, truly watching TV, watching Leslie on American Horror Story. She's brilliant this season too. We'll get to that later, but just watched uh, last night. But so you make yourself like really vulnerable. So I'm mm -hmm. really kind of like, no. as I was writing it, you know, you hear I'm like, who the fuck is going to care about oh, me oh, going to Gary. see Patty and Evita? Like, it's so specific uh, to me. Gary. Will it speak to anybody yes. else? Well, the, you fact, know? And the then fact you, that So you, the fact that it, it does speak to you, it does. it's a big re relief is the first thing. Now, I'm like, oh, God. When you had that reaction, just to the fact that Madonna gave herself another suitcase, another hall. Like, I had that, same, and I, you know, like, as a teenager to feel like, what the fuck, Madonna? Like, yeah, how can I know, you like, take... of course she did. Yes, of You're course like, of she course did. Of course took the song but that makes no sense for you no, to have. No, it was like about traveling. And it was one of the best songs in the show. Of course, but anyway. they, in the actual movie, they're like, oh, Evita's traveling In the musical Evita, the song, Another Suitcase in Another Hall is what we are talking about yeah. right now, is sung by Juan Perón's mistress mm. when she gets kicked out for Evita, uh, for yes. Ava at the time, Perón to move in. So she gets this fabulous song. It's the only song she has in the whole show. <laughs> and it's like kind of a showstopper. Yes. It's, it's really heartbreaking. So in the movie, Evita, you, Madonna has that song. <laughs> and it no and it's not, you know, so it's kind of like, she's like, and I'll take that too. I know, yeah, it's, it's like, you have Don't Cry for Fucking Me Argentina. Yeah, you need like, something else. You know, so, but anyway, that that is mentioned a bit I in my Patty Lepone. And I would just like to read a few about. other quotes that are just some little teasers that really got me. Um, when you said, um, <laughs> you were working in Saks Fifth Avenue for a while, yes. and you said attractive people and gay people get overwhelmed quite easily. <laughs> I once saw a beautiful gay salesman almost quit his job at Barney's when a second person joined the line. <laughs> It all became too much for him, and I totally understood. It all became too much for him. <laughs> it's just so good, and also your your love of soap operas that uh, that really is a theme yeah. throughout most of the essays. <laughs> well, that's what the Real Housewives is. It, it, it's things soap are operas. strung through a hundred percent. It is. But I think the thing that I think is so great about it is, yes, like it's the like you're. You're very good at being bitchy, and the snark is very yes. good. But there's so much like heart and soul, and you really do expose yourself in a way that like things I didn't know about you that I was like Gary, Thanks. like your experience in school, oh, and yes. you know the particularly the last essay, which I I don't <gasps> I have wanna, a quote. I have a quote. It's from really it. just it's so beautifully written, beautiful, and um, it just it touched my heart, Gary, and it's just well, lovely. Thank when, you. That, that's that's very nice. <laughs> I didn't expect to get so many compliments here. I would. <laughs> I wouldn't have complained on the drive over to Hollywood if I knew. I would have been like, why am I going? Oh, Leslie's going to be there. We're going to compliment no. you now all over you the place. Now you know. That's really I will also you. say, you wrote this letter to your younger self. Because, yeah, there's so much funny and there's so much snark and it's all so great. And I love that. But this was one of my favorite quotes in the book. And I think, because I, I have a young child now and I think of her in high school. And I think of my own experience when you feel alone and when you're like, oh, I haven't found my people. And, and so I thought this was what I would want to say to her too, which is when you get to high school, try talking to people. <laughs> Don't shut down for four years. Try to experience something. It will be difficult, I know. I couldn't do it or else I wouldn't be writing this letter. But here's something that might help you. Teenagers are stupid. Nothing more than insecure little narcissists covered in zits. Find one or two you can ha hang out with and just make fun of the rest of them. You just need one person to sit with at lunch, to go to the movie with, to call on the phone. That would have been nice, I think. I'd like that for you. I mean, I, I'm crying I, now. I know. I got and chills I just, and I'm welling. And I was like, yes, find that one. Like, <laughs> I love that advice. And I'm sorry oh. that you couldn't because I was like, I could have been that person for you. <laughs> I know. You know, it's always the thing. It's funny how, too, we're talking about also what a, a lot of what I write about is things from my very early school years up until I move kind of out of New York when I'm 28. But it's 
And I say it to people who are a lot younger now, and it's one of the nice things about getting older. And I, you know, I think sometimes though we you say things to younger people, and sometimes it resonates, right? Sometimes it doesn't, uh, you know. But it's the pain, like all of that stuff, if it, you know, that was painful mm -hmm. about my childhood. It's still, it's very close to the surface. Yes. Still. I mean, it, it lives. It, it's it, it it's very much alive in me. So to bring myself back to that, it wasn't kind of like how do I rewind? It's like it's right yeah. there, but it's. It's like, it's my gift, you know? It is. It is I'm grateful <clears throat> for it. If I had turned it off completely, I wouldn't have had, had anything to draw from. No. I've been drawing from it <laughs> for 30 years, yes. you know, and using it. And so when people kind of, when I see a, a kindred spirit or I recognize other people have had their, and we all, first of all, everybody does, by mm -hmm. the way, but if you've had your own really particularly miserable school experience, you know, it's stuff that you can really use that 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 the pain of that stuff i'm so grateful for yes you know and it's made you i'm sure a kinder person a better person you, <laughs> I, I like to think yeah. you know I, well, yeah. you, you you recognize we all recognize the pain in each other and when we see that similar pain or something like that yeah. i feel like i'm drawn to that and i want I, to like I do, I do too i saw this pain and i immediately was like i know this and i love this person and you know what else i i love about the way that you write gary is that a lot of times when you read it it's sort of like a memoir I mean, it's essays, but it's really about your life um, that I think people sort of want to make, like you read it and you're like, wow, you think you're really incredible. And what I love about the way that you write is you don't spare yourself either. Yeah. I mean, you're, no. you really like you lay yourself bare in many, many ways. And the thing I love about your writing is there's no bullshit. And there is one thing that I just loved and I'm not going to go into details because you need to read the story, but it involves David Schwimmer. <laughs> And it just made me so endlessly happy. That was Because also painful. the way that you go on to have like just this encyclopedic knowledge of exactly what happened that summer <laughs> and the time that you spent with him and his, and, and just, all I'm going to say is this, guys, we're not going to give anything away, no. but it's, it's so, you just, it's, you just, it, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's just brilliant. Like you just. You're you, you're able to just sort of destroy him <laughs> without ever. Direct I don't intend to. No, no, no. no you're, but you're, you're not directly doing it to just, him. You put just, it on yourself, and in the most brilliant way, you're almost like you know how Mary Lou Hannah remembers everything. <laughs> yes, yeah, she, she does does that thing. I love like, yeah. that we all know that about yes, Mary Lou Hannah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's like, yes. like she can remember she what she ate every day of her life. Like, she remembers yeah, yeah. the day she was born. Right, like yeah. on October. She's a black mirror. Yeah. No, she's amazing. But you almost have like a Mary Lou Hannah encyclopedic memory of what happened with things and the way that you're like. Like, oh, really? And you're able to like list 10 things that have, it was just incredibly yeah, satisfying. Yeah, and now it's, and also I'm, I'm doing that from, you know, a few months ago as right. opposed to when that actually happened, what I'm writing about it, which was 20 something years ago. It's so good. But I think at those points in your life, the things, if you ask me a lot about my 30s, I'm like, I don't know. Like I, <laughs> there are people I've had friendships and relationships with, and I'm like, I don't remember it. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it does. It, it didn't have value. It just means that it existed for a certain time, and then you kind of move yes. on. And some people thread through your life and reappear, and some don't. And we remember some more than others. But, and it's mostly about this time in, in my life that I'm writing about, I think it's the time that people tend to remember the most in their mm -hmm. life. Yeah, that's true. I'm not interested in people once they're, you know, like having success. Like no, once I right. started getting work as a writer, I become less interested yes, to myself. Yes, you really don't even talk you about know, that. No, no, because it's not, it, it, I was so lost for so long and you're so delusional when you are. And also at those ages when you're a teenager and you're, and you're in your early 20s, you know, I mean, the world is so new. It's like, you know, love affairs and going out mm -hmm. and dancing and those mm -hmm. shitty jobs. Yes. Oh, yeah. you know, that, and I've done you talk all about garbage mouthing at that restaurant. Yeah. I just, I worked at City Crab. I remember that garbage all. Did you work at City Crab? I worked at City yeah. Crab like eating. Did they the call it garbage mouthing? Yes, of oh, course. Right. Yeah, I didn't know. Oh no, my God. we called it garbage mouthing. And yeah. then you would like eat fries off someone's like plate yeah, literally sometimes in about, the garbage. Yeah, garbage mouthing <laughs> in it. Like, <laughs> yes. Yes. I, you know, they told me about that on my first day at Bennigan's. Like, uh, we don't allow garbage mouthing. And I was like, what's that? Oh, I knew it. And, and then they told us what it was, which is, yes, like you just said, eating off of a, cu a customer's plate yes. before you scrape it into the trash. And I was like, you've got to be out of your fucking mind. And then you, you think that I would ever. I'm like, who do you think you're and talking to? And how long to? did it take? Oh, probably that day. <laughs> 
like it was like I am I'm completely too like like the king of saying I would never do that in a million years <laughs> nah. and then I'm always kind of end up doing it I'm like eh, I changed my mind you know but no it's like you you work for ten hours straight and yes. you don't have a second to but eat I and wanted- you're going you know you get hungry but I Gary know. I have to tell you I do wish that I had this book yes. when I was like I think. This is a really good book for people who are just graduating from college, and I'll tell you why. Because I think particularly in this culture right now, like when I look on Instagram, it's a lot of like, rise and grind. Like, what are you going to do today to make your dreams come true? And it's like, I hustled 24 stuff. And it's like this (laughs) porn almost of like, you've got to be successful and you've got to make it happen immediately. And like, you know, 13-year-olds are billionaires from YouTube or whatever. And I think to to really talk about how it's hard in your early 20s and you have a dream and you don't know how to don't pin that means. dream down, even what it means to you. And but that even sometimes- in your 20s too, because I, I I felt that way in my 20s where it's like I, all my friends were either getting married or had an agent. And those were the two like, yeah. like if, you don't, if you're not married, like your friends that are like not, you know, like that are doing something else in their life or your friends that are acting, writing, performing, whatever. So marriage or agent by the time you're 23. And then if you didn't, then you're fucked when I was growing up. So the fact that you got success later, like even in your 20s, you struck your late 20s, you still. Yeah, like, I actually was, fuck? you know, it, what's so funny is like, yeah, it's not I thought it was late, but I was 29 when I was working on staff of a, mm-hmm. of a show. So mm-hmm. I was still in my 20s. But which is now I look back and I was like, oh, I started young. Yeah. People would be like, oh, you started young. But of course it doesn't feel doesn't like that. Feel no. But you're right, Leslie. I mean, I do think I would have felt like, I, I I don't know how, but there's a part of me that, you know, is super grateful I grew up when I did. And mm-hmm. there's also a part of me that's like, shit, it would have been easier if I had social media, if I had mm-hmm. other avenues to kind of figure things out because there were so many less avenues available to kind of let you know, you want to be this a TV mm-hmm. writer, here's how you would go about it. Yeah. Well, like, you also talk a, things, a lot. But but then there weren't. Well, yeah. You talk about the indignities that we had to deal yes. with because we didn't have the internet. Yeah, yeah. And how it how much we had to interact with people in person. Yes. Yeah, which is so time. true. Like <laughs> job Dramatic. interviews. And it is just, I love that you're like, not only do I think technology isn't bad, I want more technology. Yes. Yeah, I want like, more yeah. ability to not ever talk to someone face to face. And it's yeah. you go through it so brilliantly. Yeah, it's true. I mean, obviously it's, it's it's true up to an extent, but I also think, but to your point, Leslie, it's, it's totally true because social media gives this mm-hmm. fake idea of especially, and, and you see the Kardashians and, and the, they're successful. And I think that's super, of course, the, there's, the, you know, it's not like every family is the Kardashians, but they kind of own social media in a way. But if you're young and you kind of don't get it, you're like, why aren't I Kylie Jenner? Or yes. conversely, it's like, I want to start a makeup line too. So you, I'm going to put it on Instagram and I'll have it. You know, like it's this crazy <laughs> mm-hmm. not understanding. So it's the modern version. This It's the contemporary version of that same thing of not knowing how to go forward. But when you have all of these things telling you like it's easier for everybody else when it's when it's not, it can be a little bit like of a mind fog. I agree. And something that I related to when you're miserable working at the Paramount Hotel and you're, you're starting to get more and more disillusioned and like, what am I doing? I worked in the mailroom at UTA. <laughs> and it literally broke me, although I did lose like 10 pounds in two weeks. I have to say it was a great diet. But sometimes doing something that you really know that you don't want to be doing is the single greatest motivator. Yeah, I agree. And that I just don't think there's a lot of space anymore for people that are 25, 26 to still, you know what I mean? Like it's- to, to find themselves. Correct. Like I needed all of my 20s oh, to kind of find God. myself. Right. And if I didn't do all those things, well, I wouldn't have a book, but I also <laughs> wouldn't have what I drew mm-hmm. from yes. for, for Will and Grace and for Family Guy and for Stewie and for George and all these characters. You know, I'm drawing from all of this stuff. If I had, if something had happened, first of all, it was impossible that it would have happened to me at 22, you know, or anything like but that. Some people do get it. Like, but I it's like, into- what would have, you know, it, it really humbles you. I've been humbled. Mm-hmm. a lot, you know, even in, in, in my career, you know, it's like, and while it's terrible in the moment, it's really terrible. And I've had some, you know, like very humbling things yes. happen. Like, you know, who does he think he is? He's not funny or blah, blah, oh, blah. You know, all that kind of stuff. And you get, and you're kind of, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> like, oh, I'm so glad. I'm always like, okay. you like, I also, can deal I, with it. I gotta I say, I, I'm so glad that I, because I didn't get into a writer's room until my 30s. And thank God, because I wouldn't have had the confidence mm-hmm. in my 20s to be good in the yeah, writer's, writer's room. Yeah, a hard a writer's place room's to be. A really hard places and to I've be. And I've been in, you know, ones that are, that are, that are very tough. hard writer's rooms. And I am so glad because when I went in, when I was ready and I finally did it in my 30s, I had the confidence, I had the 
knowledge. I have the confidence myself. So even if you have a bad day, you're like, mm-hmm. it's just a bad day as yeah, opposed to, as a, I suck. I can't this. do this. I can't raise my I hand anymore. I my can't. last pitch. Yeah, yeah. like, and so, and you need that for me. I, I needed that. No, so I, thank I God that I didn't get any success until that time because I was ready to meet it. And I also kept thinking about baby Gary. And I kept thinking about young Gary, who he does a great thing about how you loved um, saying you were sick to stay home from school (laughs) and all the different levels that it would get to, which was hilarious. But I just kept thinking, if you told that Gary um, the life that you will have, you know what I mean? That you're going to be married to this incredible person and have this amazing career and that it just gets better and better and better. Like, was this a life that Gary then in Queens in your house, like, could you have imagined this life for yourself? In some way, I was always, I don't know why, I was always a very hopeful kid. I, I was just, I think it, it's just in my DNA, like even, you know, I used to, like I mentioned it too in the book, but I had crippling headaches, migraines from my whole childhood and they stopped about the day that I came out when I was wow. 19. Literally, I thought it was a normal thing that people right. got headaches. I, I, used to have to take, I used to have to lie down Oof. when I come home from school because, because but I was giving myself these, yeah. these headaches. It was, you know, because it was, has to manifest, I mean, itself, you know, some way. But I was a hopeful kid. Like, I always felt like you know, it's like also when I saw Stephen Carrington on Dynasty, for yes. those of you don't, that don't know, in the 80s, not only was Dynasty with Joan Collins, Linda Evans, a hugely Everything. popular soap opera. The whole country watched like Dynasty for three years. million people Yeah, yeah it was like it. insane. Uh, but there was a gay character on it, Stephen Carrington, who was the son of the the uh, lead, Blake Carrington. Blake, yes. And he also was gay and he was... He was very troubled, but he was like, <laughs> he was very all American looking and very unapologetic. And I really was like, to speak to, did I ever imagine a, a, mm-hmm. a future for myself? I was just, I thought about it. Maybe I was 12 or 13 when I saw it in a very practical way. I was like, if he, this is the most popular show on TV. Mm-hmm. And if they're saying there's a gay guy that looks like him on it, there have to be a lot more yeah. of us. <laughs> I need to find them. Yes. You know, it was that kind of, so, so there's something for me out there. There were, always those little signposts. Patti Lapone was mm-hmm. was another one. I, as a child, I couldn't articulate it. It was only as an adult that I recognized what that stood for for me. Another life. Yeah. You know, oh, wow. some a, a, way, a way into another world, that kind of thing. So all those things away, yeah, I did think, I hoped for myself. I, 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 I hoped for myself that there, but it has exceeded, you know, my hope. Brad exceeded my, you know, my hopes for who I would find. Well, and your career and just who you are. And I think it's also the best example of don't peak in high school. No, no. God, don't peak. <laughs> don't I have that. a feeling, and I say this lovingly to our listeners, none of us did. <laughs> no. no. Oh, my God. Because I didn't Because we have the smartest, funniest, coolest listeners in the world, and none of us mm-hmm. had. All of us have, have were damaged, and that is why we are who we are. And, and let's we be like honest. We when we look back on the people who did peak in high school, it's not great for them now, Gary. No, it's no. not great for They're them. They're not being no. interviewed about their soon-to-be huge <laughs> hit book that's going to be on the New York Times bestseller right? list. Thanks, Leslie. And I just want to say I have to make it very clear. This is the perfect book to buy someone for the holidays. It I'm, really is. I'm so excited. I've already, I have this copy and I'm literally giving it to my friend who's so, I'm seeing her on Saturday and I'm like, I have it for you. It's but like, I'm I, jealous like, that I can't read it for the first time again. It's so good. And, and I'm, you will go back and read it though because absolutely. the quotes are so funny. And before we go to break and talk housewives, which we will, I just wanted to read one more <laughs> quote that really killed me. Um, <laughs> this one is just about acting, but it really struck me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Method acting is basically acting like you're not acting, which is the effect of making you look like you're acting twice as hard. (laughs) It's so good. So good. Oh my God. And I was like, yeah. Thanks. Because of course I wanted to be an actor because yes, every course. gay child sure. wants to be an actor. Chris. I don't know one that doesn't. It's your oh, birthright. It kills me. It um, but we'll Thank take a you. little break and we'll come back. Guys, we're back. We've been having a jolly old time. I mean, really, I feel like we've all been, I mean, you and I have been friends for a while, but Gary, you and I have been friends in my heart for a Aww, long thanks, Danielle. time. But let's talk about your other friends, our other <laughs> friends, and that is the housewives. Yes. Now, you have, did you start watching them before you became friends with it? How did you come to these gorgeous ladies because they are the dynasty of today i will say that yeah like, yeah yeah. they is... are and also the all my children yes all my mm, lives, absolutely you know, our, they're, our, they're our story yes yep. they are you know uh every generation gets the all my children <laughs> they deserve <laughs> um 
I well, Lisa Brad knew Lisa Rinna socially mm -hmm. and through Bravo. Well, before she was even a housewife, yes. so we had met. Um, and it, but it wasn't until actually she started commenting <laughs> on my Instagram, and then we never even acknowledged it to mm -hmm. each other that it was kind of happening at all. I was like, <laughs> Lisa's doing this thing, and it was weird. And it wasn't until the New York Times um wanted to talk to me about my Instagram when it was kind of blowing up around uh, Meghan and Harry's wedding, and they asked me about Lisa Rinna, like, and then I that's when I finally reached out to her, and I and I you know because. It was almost like we didn't want to communicate with each other yes. to like maybe like ruin the it thing. It kept it pure. Yes. yes. And then I was like, the New York Times asked me about <laughs> you, so I guess this is a thing yeah. now. And we um, laughed about it a lot, and we kind of had fun, and we hung out, and um, I adore her. And you've also had a night out on the town with Eric and yeah, Jane. Yeah, we, we yes, also, you socialize with we, her. We do socialize. You go to Craig's with her. We do go to Craig's with with Erica. We love that. Brad and I. Yeah, Brad just spent Fashion Week. He and Erica went I to mean. Indochine together. I mean. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And she's going to be uh, doing Chicago on Broadway as yes. Rocky Hart. And she's going to be brilliant. I know. And, um, she's going to be really good. She is. She's going to be great. I mean, to get a lead. Huge. Yeah, it's to perfect for her. Yeah. And we're going to go see her in that. Of course. Uh, of course, right? Yeah, yes. no. Yeah, we, lo we love them. And are they exactly like they are on the show? Do you notice a difference? Does yeah, I think that, you know, I, I think they are. I think in order to be successful on those shows... You have to find a way to be authentic yourself. The audience can, an audience can sniff out. They might not be super aware that that's what they're doing, but audiences can sniff out when people are being false. Absolutely. When, they, when it's contrived and they're kind of perform, performing for the camera in a way. You have to be your authentic self at like, or really, though, on your best day at a cocktail party with all your best <laughs> friends on your birthday on Christmas oh Eve with a glass of champagne <laughs> the best in your best you've outfit. Ever had on. So it's that, but it's like ratcheted up to. I think you can't. I can't be yourself. Like I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm feeling very low energy today. Yeah, no. So I'm gonna. You know, you can't do. You can't be that. You have to come in and be like, boom. Well, that's why I love. I would say, um, Atlanta and. Beverly Hills and Potomac and New York the best because they they always come in with great hair, always. great makeup, great energy, uh -huh. ready. They're like, we're to here to work. Play. Yeah, we appreciate it. As yes, right. we yeah. do. Like, I, yeah. really, I don't want to see you in your sweats. No, and they <laughs> deliver. They never don't look Amazing. Sometimes it's a big swing and a miss. Yeah, but, I but love at it. least there's sweet. You know, Babe Ruth. He swung a lot. <laughs> and he yeah, missed a lot, yeah, but he had totally. a lot of home runs. And I appreciate that about those casts. Like they come to play. Yeah. And I, I hats off to them. But the thing I love about Rinna, and I think. Erica Jane also, but Rinna really gets it, is Rinna's been in the business a long time. Yeah. She knows exactly who she is, and she has a, a really amazing sense of herself, how to sell herself, and a sense yes. of humor about yeah. herself. She's funny, and she's warm, and she's charming, but it's also, it's it's what you said. I think there's something, and also gay people love her, mm -hmm. and part of it is, uh, you know, I mean, Judy Garland is a very tragic figure, and it's very sad, although if you haven't seen Judy with Renee Zellweger, go see it. Uh, Renee, I, I'm by dying. the way, I Renee Zellweger, it, Renee Zellweger Oh. needs to win the Oscar. Yes. Um, I just think, I think she's spectacular. I had a real Sophie's Choice moment. I was walking to the theater and it was like downtown Abbey and oh, yeah. like Judy. And I was like, Judy. Oh. I know. That's a real, I you like, can go back for Judy. You can go back for Judy. It's choose? great. But I think it's because um, Elise has been working for so long yeah. and she's she also has a real, I love her attitude, which is like, fuck it, I'll take a job. Yes. A job is a exactly. job. I have the same attitude. By the way, you know, you, you, you do, you hustle. I You know, I've done every mm -hmm. crappy job. I don't have any illusions that, you know, I'm above any kind of a thing. It's like I try to do things always at a certain level. I know but, you're here, so. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. But I think people are celebrating Lisa now as getting the kind of success yes. in her 50s that she has more success than she's ever had before. Because I think people like that, you know, that she's, she's done it. She's a hustler. She's never been like, I'm too good for this. No. I'm not doing this. I'm Lisa Rinna. She's like, I'm Lisa Rinna and I want to work. Yes. You know, and now it's like she's become, you know, she's iconic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She that is. Kind of and that, that hair is like, yeah, I love the whole her thing. hair. It's like good for her. So you really root for her. Yes, and, and absolutely. And I think because of also the history of people know her from so many things along the way. Yes. And it's like, and just like she's here and she's at the top of her game now. And how many women get that? You know, not, in their 50s? Not, not many. And I will say, I don't know if you guys watched her commercial for Maleficent. Yeah, she was oh, great. Oh, so it's great. I'm like, this is Oscar. Yeah. Also, she's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, she is. 
the Lisa it. could surprise. Like yes. I, I think Lisa could end up with an Emmy. Like you put I her, be you put her in the right FX miniseries, yep. yes. and you you know the right part. Call your it's Ryan like Murphy. She's, Agreed. You know he's a real fan. Definitely. So let's get it going. Yeah. Well, don't, she- don't give heart to Ryan too. <laughs> he's got everybody. He just got Ben Platt. I wanted him. He's got him. Wow. It's like. We um yeah no but I I think Lisa could really no that yeah. commercial I was like I do too that, that she moment, looks like, amazing like she has levels to her like her whole, <laughs> like I'm like this performance yeah. just this commercial I didn't even know what it was for at first I was like what are we doing here where mm-hmm. are we going with this and then I was like oh she's fantastic like this is award winning performance yeah. mm-hmm. in that commercial <laughs> yes. I know yeah. I was thrilled she always for brings it. it she does so let's talk OC okay yeah I've been watching I'm gonna be on watch what happens live next <gasps> week with an OC house which one do you know which, which one? one I do which one I'm already excited go go, go. Bronwyn <gasps> this is okay. big this is I know big. This I know we've been DMing uh, what yeah uh, yeah, because I want to go in. First of all, I don't like when guests aren't like, yeah. connecting no, with each other and too. friends. Yes. And I was like, you know, and, and she started following me. So I was like, Bronwyn. It's like, what's she Bronwyn? has come in what's, very and hot. And I'm like, oh, like she's going to be my housewife. Because I knew I was yes. getting an OC person. Mm-hmm. So every week I would be like, I hope it's this. And then I would be like, I hope it's not this. You yes. know, because well, it would Andy's depend good. on good. I think Andy's good be. about mixing yeah. Yeah, and Yeah, but I, I was I've like, I've been on with oh. Vicky and Shannon. I would think it would be easier. That's a tough two to yeah. pick, well, which would be easier. You need to know that when, and I, I talked about this with you guys before, that with Vicky, she um, was very clear in which seat I would sit in. She okay. was like, the I, I'm an OG and I sit next to Andy. And I was like, copy you, Vicky. Like, <laughs> got it. But I think I, Bronwyn's going to be interesting because this is probably her first time on Watch What Happens Oh, like. yeah. Oh, she'll, you'll yeah, get She's going to be great. We've already been like, we're going to have fun. I, for sure, Miss Priscilla is going to do her makeup and Julius will do her hair. You know, that's the same people that do every single one of those housewives and they do all the reunions. Unions. You know this, right? No. Okay, really, Danielle? No, now I didn't I'm know it either, Danielle. I'm there trying. is a woman named Miss Priscilla who's a makeup artist who's so lovely, and this guy— They always look amazing at the reunion. And I'm going to say, I think his name is Julius, and I can't think of his last name, but they do all of their hair and makeup, all of them, for Watch What Happens Live, the reunions, and they all fight over who gets to see these people. And when you go to New York next, I think when you're in New York, you should have— Miss Priscilla and Julian do your hair and makeup. They do every one of the housewives. Oh, all those fun. looks. Well, when we when Casey and I, when Casey and I together did watch what happens live, it was just the two of us because it was two of us. But yeah. when Casey has gone on, she has had she had Ramona, and oh, that is that's a, a lot. Tough, that's a lot. Tough one. That's tough. Ramona would be tough. Yeah, I think. Because I don't think she's Casey aware of anyone else in the room. Come for her and not come for her, but be like, yes. I didn't think you were right. But then she's like, I ended up just being like, You're right, Ramona. I'm totally on your side. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to get on the Ramona coach. Oh, no, of course. But I will not. say now we had we think a big I think we had a big week in mm. Housewives with the Brawin Tamra mm. seduction. Yes, yeah, that was yeah, the Bronwyn Tamra makeout. Yeah, stuff because at that it restaurant. felt what is real? that restaurant? That, well, every First of restaurant all, I'm obsessed OC. with the restaurants they go to on the OC. Oh, yes. like that it's always giant square plate. Well, the, loud, first of all, the loud woman or something. My favorite, the quiet woman. Oh, sorry. My favorite thing on all of the housewives is they always show them ordering. You yes, always oh, it's hear my favorite what they thing. order. They never cut that they out. They do that on purpose. Yeah, and I love to hear what they order. Oh, that's really. And it's always a spicy skinny margarita, spicy, and it's a guac. Margarita. It's a guac app. Except for Shannon, always does kettle one with with. Uh, juice on yes, the Yes, exactly. Thank <laughs> you for remembering. You, um, right. But I want to just make something clear about this episode. And you know that I, you know that I've watched every single episode of every single franchise of I The Housewives. I. I didn't know that. Right. Yeah, I. it's. I mean, I consider Except for Miami. Okay, well, even I did that. And DC. Miami. I watched was, all DC. Okay, got it. Thank you. <laughs> um, this one, I have to say, uh, it felt dark. This one felt dark to me. Um, I feel like things have really, uh, we've gone off the rails, guys. In what way? Well, I don't know if this is like a hormonal menopause situation that's happening. First of all, I feel like Tamara is like, look, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on this show. So now I got like, she keeps kicking it up a notch and kicking it up a notch. I just, to me, just Emily screaming outside and Gina being like, what are you talking? And in the bathroom where there's actual strangers oh, in those the bathroom, walking in. and then for Shannon to be good. for Shannon to be embarrassed about Emily being up front, she's like she's in, and she's sitting there up front <laughs> crying, and I'm like Shannon, that was you for three years, a, and B, at least it's outside of the restaurant. First of all, every one of the patrons in those restaurants deserve to have their meals compensated, yes. and I oh. hope that happened. 
Yeah, that one was crazy, though. Like, we were, like, also, if you know what it takes to kind of perform like that in Ugh. the restaurant. When when I did Brad's reality show and we'd film in a restaurant, you know, I was mortified <laughs> because you can't say, or obviously you can't say that. So I'm, the whole time we're filming, all I'm thinking is everybody is like, why is there a camera right. on them? Who are they're they? disrupting. It's right. like, so they're really putting, like, I, I like to be, like, not under this enormous spotlight. And we're still, we would, like, go up. Like, thank you so much. I hope it wasn't. So you wouldn't hump someone on the floor? No. Screaming? So we would just talk the way we're talking now and have a conversation like this. I wouldn't even raise my voice. And so hopefully they'll forget about it. (laughs) They go to fucking town. (laughs) Oh my God. It's like they're rolling on the floor. They're throwing drinks and glasses and screaming. It's like crazy town when there's other people in there. All I would be thinking is like, oh God, like we can't, we can't do this. But you know, it's like all bets are off. All bets. Like they don't care. Like, I felt though the attraction between Tamara and Bronwyn was real. Am I crazy? But no, I, I, I felt real to me. But I want to tell you something. And I, I'm sorry because I know she's your very dear friend now. But Bronwyn fills me with a deep sadness. Um, Bronwyn's mother. There's oh, there's Doctor Deb. Doctor Deb. Which um, Gary, I just there's there's a lot. Okay, well she has seven kids. Just do a deep dive life. on Doctor Deb. So I feel like Bronwyn had a a, a very challenging childhood. Yes. And uh, when you start hoarding children like that, that's not just like, we love kids. She has nine, nine children, Gary. No, seven. I thought it was nine. Seven, no, but seven. still, it's a lot. I literally there's, thought she honestly, had nine Honestly, there's not a difference between seven. seven. No, there really isn't. And but, it's, it's, but there's something, there's something, it's like the person that then starts to, once you get over four dogs, Gary, like things, <laughs> like your house constantly smells like pee and shit. Like there's no way that seven, like that's a, that's a, a pathology. The kids seem sweet. The family seems I'm sure lovely, the kids though, are sweet. Can I ask you a question? On, on the show, Do you they think all that seem it's, really lovely. Okay, great. Do you think it's going to turn out well for them when they see last night's episode of their mother and what she's doing? Like, do you think it's great for the kids at school? Leslie, you could say that about any one of these kids on any franchise, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that she well, had seven or four We're going to talk about I mean, Brooklyn, everybody. Brandy's daughter on uh, <sighs> Dallas, which you're, we'll get into that later. Okay. But <laughs> it's just Bronwyn fills me with a deep sadness. First of all, her admission that she does not get blowjobs. That I, was shocking I think that's me. shocking. I don't think you're allowed to do that in a marriage. I don't think you're allowed <laughs> to just declare, I'm not giving blowjobs. Like, what if your husband was like, guess what? I'm not dealing with your vagina But she's longer. fine uh, licking puss. I, Is that the way we say it? <laughs> It just, it feels to me like- She's fine. She said she goes down on another woman. That laugh, that laugh, there's a lot of pain behind the laugh, guys. So for me, I I know that we're supposed to enjoy the Hot Mess Express. For me, it felt very dark. It felt, and when Vicky is the voice of fucking reason, when you guys are screeching your way through Orange County, and also just like enough with the train jokes, I'm done with the train joke. That is so dark. I have to say though, to me, that's what's dark. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dark to me. I actually think- she was being silly and playful. I don't because she's your all. best friend, and you've got to do watch what happens live. So cover your ass here, Gary. Yeah, correct. I'm I'll be sitting next to her, Bronwyn. <laughs> yeah. I love you. I think no, I have no part in this. I do not think it got was dark, it. but I do think the train, the tra- especially stuff is dark. that. I also think the is people like, on the train with them. They were showing there was like actual you know passengers. Also, that's definitely something that should have been stopped talking about. I, I had to ask what it was. Brad and I had to Google it. Oh. I didn't know what a train was. I know. Oh. I know. I've Guys, never heard I like that you're living in this land of innocence. Exactly, exactly. I knew exactly what a goddamn know? train no was. Exactly. I had no idea. I, mean, I, I, no idea. To I never thought it would have been something that it's not great. That yeah, it's awful. And yeah, for them to all be laughing about it now, no. when they started it, like Tamara's like, "Oh, we'll make a joke of it." Like Tamara didn't have any part in it. <laughs> Tamara brought Tamara and Vicky together, and that Kelly had a. I was like, Kelly, you should not have a sense of humor. No, about this. it's not. You funny. should be like, this is not funny because it's not real, and you guys have made it real. Yeah. My child watches this. Yeah. Shut it's the how, fuck. Yeah, that up. is very. That's, that's probably. So but my my favorite thing about the episode, but we can't not talk about this. Okay. Is also, and this is my favorite thing about. Any <laughs> any housewives because I obsess over other different weird things okay. like that Megan came back uh-huh. yes. and she uh-huh. just came back to join yep. the party okay <laughs> in a, a crazy conductor yep. outfit yes. which are also, and a denim, also a denim onesie. I love Megan I liked her uh-huh. when she was on the show and I, and, I, and, and I, she's I been know, going through it yeah, yeah. her yeah. personal life I think she's she was great on on that Brooks cancer scare I think. oh she, she oh, was Nancy hello Drew. she brought it down she brought it down she was. 
a relentless investigator. Yeah, and was, I appreciate that. I, she I, was, too. I, would, I would have been like her, too, because uh-huh. I would have been saying the she same was, thing. She was like, like, oh, I got time. Yeah. <laughs> she was Woodward and Bernstein. Yeah, yeah. She was she genius. Was, was she was her own Christian on one point. Yeah, she was <laughs> cracking that. She was Ronan Farrowing yes, that. Yes, she, all before Ronan Farrow was Ronan <laughs> Farrow. There was Megan <laughs> King Edwards, and she doesn't get enough credit for it. Uh, and now she has to show up oh, at yeah. a random yeah. picnic table at a train station in Del Mar. <laughs> no. With meeting Emily, who she doesn't know from Adam, and then and she Gina, gets who's reduced. Like, who the hell's Megan? <laughs> yeah, but she's an extra now, so she was. And she has to sit there and listen don't to come Emily. Back. Don't now, come back Gary, and be an extra. Now, Gary, all I was looking at was Megan the whole. You episode. bring up an interesting point because this also carries over into Dallas with Carrie Duber. Yes, that she also was a full fledged housewife, and now this season is just in the background. When you get to like, I want to just say something. It would be like if I was on Horror Story doing what I did. And I came back the next year as a background actor. Yeah. What are you doing? No. What are no. you doing? The no. only person no. who made it from out of the, went to friend zone and came out was Luann de Lissette. That is true. Luann did. She did. But she scratched and bit <laughs> yes. and married and divorced yep. her way I'll out. I'll never forget that season where she didn't hold an apple. Oh. And she she was like, I'm getting that fucking apple. That was me. kind of the beginning of, well, of that- gnarly times for her, too. Yes. Yeah. Well, she was willing to. She's, yep. She was willing Luan, to. Twin. She's like, you want me to marry Tom? Luan Fuck it, I'll do have, it. She should have always had the apple, by the way. Agreed. She's always, like, Luann's like full on terrific. I also she felt that about, oh, 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 yes, she is. And, and you Sheree, think, yes. I stand by the fact that Sheree, she by Sheree, uh-huh. deserves a peach no math. Agreed. Her what? Agreed. I think also if we're going to talk about people, housewives with friends and back. Mm-hmm. First of all, when did that whole thing start about creating the friends? <laughs> the house, it's like it wasn't horrible enough that yep. they could get plucked off. Now another humiliation has to exist. It's, terrible. it's not enough for these women if we'll let them know a week before filming whether or not they're going to be famous yeah. or a nobody again. How about we throw another wrinkle in where we could <laughs> make them a day player and they can kind they, of they, fight they make, their way back? What is it? 50, is it $1,500 for a day work? I, I think don't it's $1,500. Bucks but it was day. Danielle Staub. I mean, yeah, oh, she, she came back. You even see yes, the, the trailer did. for this season. Of the oh. I'm like, I get chills. Jersey she comes keeps on. fucking bringing yeah, it. Danielle, over. you know, like I, I see that. I guess she's not. A, what do they hold in Jersey? We always, we I remember, always say a term, said, pipe, yes, but I'm not sure. <laughs> no, wait, so we hold? do Amy Phillips, so they hold. They held meatballs. <laughs> like I don't know what they. Wait, but really, what do I they don't, hold? Do they on hold this nothing? is bad that we don't diamond? know. They know that is it a diamond? That's Beverly Hills. They're not holding diamonds in New Jersey, Danielle. You guys. Holding Just pylons? Like, what are they holding? This is very, a gun? <laughs> this is very know. important. But I like the meatballs. But this is just talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, but but Danielle, yeah, but Danielle coming back, You're it's right. like a jolt of like adrenaline. It's like when when they gave that shot to Uma Thurman in you yes, know, Pulp Fiction. Yes. And she comes, that's what that's Danielle entering a scene. It's like, mm-hmm. you know. And, well, and mm-hmm. Vicky being a friend of this. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm I mean, for that though. That Can I just say? Admitted to that. But I can't believe she did. But she. She cannot be not on screen. I think it would kill her. I think she would cease to exist if Vicky Gumbleson. I, I don't think the insurance bin mm. industry is enough for Mm-mm. her. Even though I did, she she's on the cover of some magazine this month. I think it was called like <laughs> I was it, like I, love the or something. I know it was like Pyramid Lady, Scheme Lady Weekly or something. Is that what you said? <laughs> okay, I ju- th- my my Do internet is my internet is not working. I here. think they could have their hands on their hips. I seem to remember Teresa with like her hands on her hips kind of a thing it's kind of like a defiant pose yeah, like, like you know like very jersey like we don't need to hold <laughs> any of your shit but we don't it need is your shitty apples you guys this is bad that we don't know what they hold they, might not hold they don't anything. hold anything maybe they, you know what i think they might just i think yeah. in dallas too they just cross their arms they've now run, they've run out of yeah they've run out of uh, things appropriate yeah okay like, but so you like it doesn't fill you with a deep darkness when you see women in their mid-50s screeching like crows and fake humping each other and acting like they're like i'm i'm Leslie. open it just i can't handle Leslie. it Leslie. yeah I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, I enjoyed myself. Again, thoroughly. I enjoyed it also. It did. I did get I a do dopamine think rush. Sometimes they, sometimes it veers into the kind of like. Mm, I felt yeah, real you know, to like, me. It didn't feel put on. I feel uh-huh. like we're watching a romance blooming. Okay. <laughs> so what do you think is going to happen? I feel like there's going to be a hookup. Okay. Do you think they're cheated? Like, do you count that as cheating? I don't think in their relationships they do. Obviously, Bronwyn's doesn't because she right. brings. I it. don't think anything you do for the cameras yes. is cheating. It's true. It's the cameras That's there. That's considered a job. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> Love That's it. Exactly. Break it that, down, you know, Gary. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, I mean, if, you know, so do we think something's going to happen? I could see it. So I, she, think, you, I mean, I think it already happened. Do you think she'll bring her lactation into the bedroom? That was crazy. Mm-hmm. 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 How old's the youngest? A ba- one. Remember? Is she still breastfeeding? Probably. I can't even remember. She I'm said saying, she's been breastfeeding for 19 years. That's or something crazy. like that. I breastfed or, for one year and I was like, I'm done. Hi, I adopted my child to avoid any <laughs> fucking <laughs> touching or that is you I had not formula. for me, guys. Well, I had formula. formula. That's mine what they mother, had when we were kids. Well, you oh, I, I think I had formula too and I only <laughs> breastfed mine just because like I was like, oh, I can so I'll do it. <laughs> but I was like, I didn't, some mothers really had this bonding moment. Me, I was just like, oh my God. She's an efficient eater so it was like 10 minutes so oh, I was fine boy. with it but uh, mm-hmm. you know to each his own right um, but <laughs> don't I, no no fucking emails about boob patrol no everybody has to each everyone you do you when you get the baby your 16 year old by all means keep do it going what ladies you need to do for you and your child I want to say that the darkest moment for me of the entire episode darkest okay. was when Tamara had to pay that offer that guy $200 to dance with Shannon uh-huh uh huh. Oh, that I missed that. Oh, it yeah. wasn't great. It no. wasn't great. It was tough. Her, her kissing that guy to that, me. Oh, Mar- Mario. I actually Mar- think Marco? that. Marco. I, I actually think that was that, the darkest right. moment. That was, I had no tough. problem. Bra- Bronwyn and Tamara was silly and it was playful, f- fun or whatever. Oh. But that that they knew each other. They yeah. worked yes. together. They're cast members. Mm. But that's a random guy in a bar who's got yeah. a camera on him yeah. and is kind of like Ugh. it was like a dare or yeah, something. It, was it felt so like really weird. aggressive. It felt uncomfortable. It wasn't great, especially for me. Like that's something I did once or twice, like when I went to a frat party, not even my own frat, like when I would visit friends at a Mm. fratty school and I was just like at some party where everyone's like in a frat house getting wet or whatever. Like that (laughs) is the type of behavior for an 18 year old idiot. Uh But to do that, like it was like they were at a foam party. But I I agree with you. But can I just ask a question? Because now that I have a child and my daughter is turning 13 next month and she's in seventh grade. So you want to talk about school being difficult. But I just now I can't stop seeing it through the lens of like, what if my daughter saw me behaving this way? I'm not trying to bring re- too much reality into it, guys. But for some reason, this this particular episode was like, it was like my my like I really all of a sudden it was like my eyes were open <laughs> and I just now really, yeah. close them. You, yes. but you haven't missed but an episode it's been 14 and now years. Tamara has had this horrible thing happen with her daughter where the daughter won't speak to her. Yes, and, and then she, this is how and then she's like I would give up just this like a couple days ago she was like I would give up all reality television for relationship with my she daughter. She would not. It's like, no, you wouldn't because you would have never yeah, done she, this. No, yeah, I don't. And she also continue. Her daughter's like. Just don't talk about me. And then yeah. she continues to talk. So even in her saying, like, I would give it all up for my daughter, it's still don't her talk about her. her daughter. So no. It- so yes, I agree with you. The $200 <laughs> offer to kiss Shannon was was pretty bleak. It was bleak. Now, what do you guys think of Kelly? I'm curious your thoughts on Kelly. I'm afraid to say what I really think of Kelly because I feel like she'll show up to my house at three o'clock in the morning with a fucking tire iron. <laughs> That's what I think of Kelly. She's out of control. I And I'm concerned for Jolie. I think she's... I love Kelly. Wow. What do you think about her relationship with the surgeon, which we know is over? That's a bad relationship. And now she's dating a Fox News. Yes, she is. Which is upsetting. Uh I'm Uh, sure you think she's not a Trumper. Please. They're all Trumper. She's not. How is she not a Trumper? I feel like somebody told me. Aren't they all? I feel like I heard all Kelly of them was are. not. Someone told me I, Vicky for, for sure, sure. Oh, Tamara yeah. for sure, for oh, yeah. Emily we know, of course. And I, th- what's her Emily? name? Emily's a Trumper. Uh, I, I know. know it's upsetting. She's a fucking Trumper. You guys, l- and l- their relationship that is r- is the roughest. Wow. He didn't pass the bar again. Of course, again. Not. Again, badly. and he sacrificed seeing his family for two weeks, not for the bar. Nope. No, but I think that's that. also kind of clear. It's a question of like, I don't want to be on the show. Yeah, it doesn't that's feel true. like to but me. But he's like, just I mean, don't so mean. Be but the way but he I, speaks. But, but then don't consent to a fucking confessional and say those terrible awful things. I agree. Things. I agree. Don't don't do it. You can't. And even when he's on the phone, you're right. Never mind. I take it back. The confessional <laughs> is a real. <laughs> Thank you. That's, a whole, that's definitely also, like you're dancing on the pole. My when, favorite you know. thing ever was when Emily a couple episodes ago was with her mother in law and was like basically Harry. trying to be like, your son treats me terribly, and she's like, you just go to the bathroom and scream into the toilet yes! <laughs> like that was what she told i'm a like, great mother-in-law advice uh, awesome mm-hmm. things are going great in but the she is we are the toilet we are screaming into <laughs> we're the toilet uh, she's screaming this is into. why and this is why you're you Danielle, because you're correct and you're we able to see that, that she is yeah. screaming into mm-hmm. look oc is better this season than it was last yes we are 100%. lucky to have it with us yes is it a perfect show no it's it's no 
Atlanta. Uh-huh. It is no, no Potomac. Do Atlanta. you watch Potomac? No. <gasps> Gary, I, watched, I don't Gary. watch Potomac. I want to tell you something, and Sorry. I mean this. This is the first time I'm seeing a chink in your armor. And it's tough. <laughs> it's tough because to me, I'm you're being perfect. Honest, no, though. no, but I'm, what I'm saying is to you me, you're perfect, know. Gary. And when it's hard you know, to know better, this. you do better. Yeah. Okay. And now you know Gosh, better. But will I, how now will you know I know better. what's going on? Can, <laughs> yeah, you just, I know. can you just jump in? Will I be able to follow the stories or understand the relationships? I don't know. Do I have to watch it from episode oh, one? No, I, I do want to say this. Now, I have been a Potomac stan from day you one. You have been. And I want to tell you something, Gary. You would be doing yourself a gift by starting from the beginning. I'm sure that over the holidays, okay. where are you going to go? Turks and Caicos? Like, <laughs> you and Brad have wonderful trips. And you do, I mean, your Italy trip, which I love oh, vicariously Can I tell you, you, again, you did not know me and I was following it on Instagram. Oh, because it was great. And also just you and the food and Brad's entire, it's really like his Instagram and your Instagram together, it's free entertainment. It's incredible. But I'm going to tell you. When you go on your 18-hour flight or wherever you're going over the holidays, I want you to watch from the beginning of Potomac. Okay, and you okay. will, and I mean this, uh, Leslie, okay. you will thank me. Is it two seasons? It's three. three. It, it'll go by in five seconds, <laughs> okay. and you're going to want more, and it is wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Right. These All women right. do not disappoint. Okay. Also, I just want to say, I, and this has nothing to do with anything they're talking about. I'm assuming all your listeners watch Married to Med. They do. In fact, Casey and I okay, are starting great. to get on Married Thank to Med. Thank you. We have because I've been with that yet. since day and one. 90 Day Fiance, which is... There's so many. There are. It's, there's too many the other way. Before, Do you million after. dollar listing or no? No, I don't do that. Real well, my husband, okay. is, my husband <laughs> is a realtor in Beverly Hills, and it gives him too okay. much stress. And right. so he, I'm not allowed to turn that on in the okay. house. But I do have to say, I have recently, in the past year, discovered Below Deck and Below Deck. Oh, oh Below Deck yeah, and Below, Below Deck. Those I want to tell you. Are wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Those, Those are my wonderful. Are great. Those are my no, I'm obsessed treats. with how much they have to tip for, and I figure out the date. I'm like, they've been on that boat for two nights, and they left $17,000. <laughs> Who are these people? Now, and why is that not enough? Now, why I do want to tell you something. I don't allow my daughter, like, I, I do turn the housewives off when Me she too. comes in. Me too. But I want to tell you that we have started to watch Below Deck Med together. Yes, you and should. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. She's well, almost 13. Is that okay? Thank you. Yes. Okay, housewives is not. Yes. Thank you. We're going to take a slight break and come back and do Dallas. And we're back, guys, with Dallas. Uh, just a real quick Dallas. I mean, not much happened this week except for we had... Oh my gosh, we have Brooklyn. Now, uh, Brooklyn, the gymnast, she's the child. So mean. She's the meanest child. She's so She's so mean to mean. her mother. And like why how come you wouldn't think your mom was cool that she was a cheerleader? Because but here's the thing, she lets her be mean. You yeah, have to when true. my child says anything yeah. to me that is mean, I don't laugh. No. I don't think it's, it's not funny. funny. It's not funny. You have to say and I and I, I'm just like that hurts my you have to mm-hmm. tell them early yeah. that hurts my feelings. You may not talk you are to not like allowed that. to talk to me that way. And yeah. you have to show them early. You don't have to be cruel. You don't have to smack them. You just have to say, I believe, say no. But that I do want to not- say she is, and she's a child, mm-hmm. and I'm aware that I'm talking about a child. We have talked about her on this She podcast. is one of the most hateful children I've actually ever seen <laughs> on television. How old is she? I don't watch that. I want to say eight or nine. Eight, eight or oh, nine. Oh, she's super young. And she is, Gary. She's mean to her mother. Gary, she's mean as a rattlesnake. <laughs> She'll fucking cut you. Mm-hmm. I'm not kidding. Like she and she'll be a bad seed. She'll cut you oh, down to size too. She'll yeah. find out Who's kidding where she? your ins- she's Brandy Brandy's. the redhead. Okay. She'll find out where your insecurities lie. Oh. She'll find them and she will squeeze yeah. them for uh-huh. all their worth on purpose and knowing that she's hurting you. And she's a sadist. Yeah. But she's is she, a textbook. But is she, she sounds super entertaining. She is. She is. Okay, yeah. yeah. And like now, I want to watch. By oh the way. yeah. That's, I'm in. And for all parents, it makes you feel so much better about your kid. Yeah, because you're like <laughs> yeah. Because even when my child like. Again, we joke around and we can make fun of each other in that sort of like parent kid way. My yeah. child is old enough now to do that. She's six, but when she, if she, mm. when she says anything to me that goes, well, she, there's a line and mm. she cannot cross it. Mm-hmm. And this child, Ooh. she's the parent, and kids do yes. not like to. Kids should not be the parent. Even it panics she, them. Yes, it is yeah. not a comfortable. Because Brandy's for them. afraid of her. Brandy's like, what? You're that's. Terrible. And guess what? <laughs> there is going to be what it's going to develop into is a competition between Brooklyn. It and already, Brandy. it's already there. And it with is the not. You saw it in yes. plain view. Oh gosh! It is your going. form wasn't great. Oh, that to me, if my Brandy child was a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, okay? I was like, and you hope you make the peeweed squad, it- bitch. <laughs> I was like, as a former cheerleader, and I say this with love, as a person who fell at the national competition in oh, Dallas, Texas, wow. in front of a very big wow. audience, including ESPN. Oh, wow. That's your pilot. Wow. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I know. You want to develop it, <laughs> It really is. Uh-huh. <laughs> as a person that fell in front of a large audience, I know what it's like. And I want to say something to little Brooklyn. 
you bent your legs in that stunt, and that's not going to do. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> nice. So well, there you go, Brooklyn. Your form's off as well. Also, look, we also <laughs> learned in this episode that Brandy uh, speaks to the spiritual realm because her Mima once was smoking a cigarette at the end of her bed after she died. <laughs> so when your smoking Mima shows up on your bed, you are in touch with the realm. Oh, now, yeah. we did talk a little bit about this last week because mm -hmm. Casey had seen this very amazing psychic medium. Oh. And there are signs everywhere. So I uh -huh. believe, Brandy, because okay. I did get a sign okay. in my life. What was your sign? Well, I, I spoke about the podcast last Last week, but um, you you can call on your people anytime. Oh. And my mother in law passed away uh, many years ago, but I looked to her and um, and I asked. You can ask for a specific sign, and I asked to hear the song K Sarah Sarah because she used to sing that. And then out of the blue, my husband said it the next day. <gasps> And I hadn't heard that in years. Like, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. crazy. Okay. Gary doesn't seem okay. like he's well. Playing. You know what movie that's from? Heather's, but uh, Doris no. Day. No, it's from uh, the uh, Hitchcock one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Frank, yeah. yeah. Um, who knew too much. Yes. Doris Day. Of course. Of course. Who do you think you're it. talking oh, to? Like such a great. Yeah, if you don't <laughs> yes. know this, go YouTube Doris Day. Uh, so brilliant. It's, so, it's who, almost terrifying when she sings when it. She sings it. Yeah. it is. It's it's, it's heartbreaking. It's terrifying. Yeah. yeah, but it's beautiful. No, of course I know who you. Talking okay, to? I want to <laughs> say something. Can I just say something quickly about Dallas? So mm -hmm. when it started, um, we were introduced to a woman named Leanne Locken. Yeah, Leanne. Oh, now, I, I wanna, I, I've now, heard of her. Okay, now I want to explain something, and I mean this. In my opinion. Leanne, and what are we in our third season now of Dallas? Leanne Four, was third, fourth, one of the greatest introductions of a housewife yes. that had ever She's existed. She's a carny. No, I'm not kidding. That had ever existed. Her level of rage, her really just like not even no awareness of the camera. Like, I'm not going to let my horrific rage get in the way of what I need to do and say. No. But here's what's happened. We've seen a change in Leanne. Yeah. And here's the change. Leanne is now only aware of the camera only aware of her storylines. And it's a bummer because I do feel that we had a feral, raw Leanne mm -hmm. into the second season. Now it's like, I just- Can I, they come back from she's, that? Yeah, I know she's right. I feel that she's writing her lines beforehand. To oh, act. No, well, she did. That's... Remember when she sort of like, she had that strange line about a vasectomy yes. and she was like, I haven't put it in yet. Correct. I got to get. And even one of, I think one of the housewives was like, what does that have to do? And she's like, I don't know. It sounded good. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and it started in earnest when they were on their European trip last season. Mm -hmm. And she's just, now she's writing, I could think on her own with her gaze and they're, oh, no. and they're, oh, it's yeah, not great. It's no. bad. And so that, in all, it's, it's sad to me because I feel like the Leanne we knew is dead now. It's like Aviva with the leg on the table. Yes, you Thank feel you, it, Gary. You, you yeah. feel it. You, I mean, it you feels, just bottom lined it for me. It Thank feels you. sweaty. You can yeah. tell when your yes, housewives totally are sweaty. sweaty. Yeah. And it yeah. is sweaty this season mm -hmm. between the marriage and her really trying to milk that in a way that yeah. isn't necessarily fun. I mean, we do still have moments like when she said last week that uh, that Rich put his dick in the oh, hole uh -huh. and in got fence, jacked off through it. He had a mm -hmm. glory hole. She like, and her husband have used the neighbor's fence as, as glory a glory hole. hole. So that was, that was uh, I mean, we, Leanne. Leanne Lockett. That was a lot. Jeez, that's weird. But <laughs> yes, and look, it is, of course. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 but Gary, it's weird. It's, it's strange. And, but that was a moment of, of beauty for me because yeah. it stuck out as a real right. thing. That's not but something you can write. No, I like when things are like, <laughs> Her yeah, trauma like Olympic competition with yes, Carrie now. So and by the way, how brutal. There's a new, so there was a housewife last year, Carrie Duber. She'd been on for seasons. They have now relegated her to an extra. Yes. Nope. But guess what? There's a new housewife. Named Carrie. Also named Carrie. Wait, is she an extra or a friend? She's a, she's a friend, but, but Carrie, it's, it's an, an extra. extra. Oh, yeah, but some, well, sometimes the friend gets a lot of camera time. Like Luann, you wouldn't when know she shows she's up, a friend hold on. until the cat did When she shows up to work, there's no more trailer. She's in background holding. Yeah. Okay? That's what's and happening. And then it also, when she appears, it has to say who she is. And a yes, friend, uh -huh. friend of, friend of, and so the fact that there's a new housewife That's... with the same name, but now this competition she's in with Carrie about who's had a worse childhood and who's endured more trauma. I've got, I've say that I'm living for. Like yes. that is like like the one. It's like oh really? You were raped at 14. I was raped at 13. And then Leanne does a face it's like this. So like, dark. Try to compete with that bitch. It's like it's so really upsetting. her. It is. It is her life's accomplishment is how fucked up she is and it it's will never so upsetting mm -hmm. it is crazy and i am just like i mean i i also I no one wants to win it. that no one wants to win she it she does why <laughs> she does and that is really going to be her journey is winning how bad her life and is. I, but I feel for her because it is true pain. Like these things really happen. I didn't yes, appreciate. I'm sure. I didn't appreciate her fat shaming Deandra on camera. That was crazy. Was not okay. And 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 they do keep forgiving each other and then no. starting it up again. Where no, that no one knows where the fight ends and no. where it begins. And by the way, I'm, I'm into the lingerie shower at 1 p.m. on a Wednesday. Well, it felt like 
like this bachelorette party also happened uh, in, in mid afternoon. Yeah, on a weekday. And it is tough to have like a wild party yeah. at like two in the afternoon on a Wednesday. Mm. That's just a tough time to, you know, let loose, if you will. Yeah. It's a time for a champagne brunch. All I know is that next week we see that Mama D, who is Deandra's mother, is coming back. I want to say that Mama D also is aware of her presence now in front Carrie, of the cameras. The fact that you don't know, well, she has no, podcasts. Deandra, it's like when you, you know, if you watch the, the if it's a housewife a one that you watch, they're all like so real to you. If like you see one, it's like, you know, see it, it is out in the wild. You know, you see one yes. in, like, in the world somewhere. Yeah. It's like, oh my yeah. God. Uh-huh. But if you don't watch it, like when, even when I see like a promo for like Dallas, it's like, it's like, okay. It's like, you're not anybody. It's like, you're not, a, you're not anybody. Cause I don't want, you know, it was like when you were a kid, you'd watch the soaps. It yeah. was your soap. Yes. It's like, it's Erica Kane. Yeah. But the one that was on Days of Our Whatever. Yeah. I was like, she's nobody. Like, I don't watch it, so she doesn't exist. It's like, you don't exist. But I it's love like, that Leanne has, like, even though you don't watch Dallas, I know Leanne, Leanne has, yeah. has infiltrated, has oh, gone beyond totally, the, that's the how, realm. That's why I'm like, oh, well, I, you know, I'm not a, yeah. I don't live under a rock. I know <laughs> Leanne Locken. I appreciate the authenticity that, um, now I can't remember her name. Oh, Carrie? My, no. What's her name? The sweet blonde one who's got problems. Oh, Stephanie. Stephanie is really trying to yes. bring her authentic self this year. Well, she is the only one who can be sort of not have anything to give yeah. and yet still be interesting to watch. That is hard. I think Cameron. Oh. Was, I love Cameron. Oh. I love her. Just yelling her down. Just, uh, just yell you down. I, well, I appreciate that's a talent. I also love that Cameron's daughter, who's about eight years old, is already like, you're an idiot to yes. her mother. And I love that her daughter is like, I'm a tomboy. How about yeah. that, mom? I'm a tomboy. I love it. I love sparkle like, dog. And her, her daughter's going to camp, like very young. And she's like, aren't you going to be sad to go to camp without your mom? She's like, nope. Like her daughter is so excited <laughs> no. to get out of there. I, you know, Dallas, again, not a perfect show. And I love that. Okay. I know I said I went to a medium or Casey did. And I didn't even go to the medium myself. Casey did. And I'm like, speak, I'm like, and she spoke to me. <laughs> but when Brandy goes to, not Brandy, when Carrie, new Carrie yes. goes to yes. medium and she's just like, You've had a tough life. Which is and the most nothing, generic yeah, and basic And she's things. like, but you're getting through it. And she's like, she really spoke to me. Yeah. She really saw me. Like, no, she's the most general stuff. She had no, that one was like, I have got to get home to yeah. my show. Uh-huh. Like, it was like seven o'clock. She's like, I want to put the lean cuisine in the microwave and I want to get to my shows. Blue Bloods is on and yes. I want to get to my shows. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, that's what I felt. And they're like in this weird haunted house that really just looked like just a house. Also, of, really, um, the decor of the house, it was like, uh, I, it was upsetting. Yeah, I mean, it was just seemed to be like just a, a house, an Airbnb that no one had decorated. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Sort of well, because they have to come up with reasons to get all the ladies together yeah. now. Yeah, that's and gotta be exhausting. I hate that. They can't do another job. escape room. Can you imagine <laughs> no. the, the phone call from the producer? It's uh, like, you don't feel like enough is happening? I, know. I don't know. It's not you. Everybody's great. It's not that. It's just that there's really not anything going on. So we thought, could you maybe host something? I'd yes. be like, oh my God. <laughs> We've been filming. They have nothing. I have to host something at my house and all hell has to break loose. <laughs> shit. shit. That just the thought of that phone call fills me with such anxiety. And the it's reasons like, they come up with it's really happening. It's like my dog is getting microchipped, <laughs> and I thought we could have a party for oh, her yeah. the night when before. When Megan King and OC was like two years ago, she's like, We're all going to Dublin because I once had an ancestor yeah. that was from me. <laughs> that was real. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like don't give them a don't give them a reason. Yeah. Just go. We know they're not hosting a trip. Yeah. We know, like, you know, Kyle didn't pay for the chateau in France. Oh, exactly. So she raves. It's like I'm tasting. Just a new tell wine. us where they're going. Can't I, the audience vote where they go? At I this agree. Point? That's a very good point. Like, let us send them somewhere. I do want to just say, as my last thought on Dallas, mm-hmm. I think they have the best music. Oh. What do you mean? Like they're like little pop tunes. Their like, their opening song oh, is it, it 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 just. I want you it guys to really. You? I want you Aren't to they notice all it. the same. No, they're in a different. No, like, they're the bit they are. How dare you, Gary? No. Ultimately. It's, it's like trying same. to replicate. It's like trying to hum it. Like, how do you? I couldn't if you It's the same me. thing. Atlanta has a very different opener than Beverly Hills, than New York. You guys, wow. Okay. <laughs> I want you to notice Dallas. It's great. It's just, it'll it'll fill you with the joy. And okay. I'm glad November can't come soon enough because Atlanta is back in November. Thank and God. Jersey. We've got Kenya coming oh, back. I'm so excited. Who now is already divorced? Already divorced. Yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. wait. Kenya's really oh, bringing it. She's yeah, she she is. Is. She I'm is. very excited. <laughs> yeah. Guys, this has been a pleasure. Beyond. Leslie, thank you for co-hosting. You're thank you for dream. having me. It was just you. a dream. And everybody get Gary's book. 
Do you mind if I cancel? It's out on Tuesday. Yes. Gary, thank you so much for Thanks, coming. Guys. I'm so glad. Your book is amazing. And I'm just so glad you came. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye.